working. <clears throat> It's going to be a gorgeous day all day. We thank for that. Um, and our uh, announcements today, don't forget now today, 1230, following service at Oakland, we will have a welcome luncheon for Reverend Phil and Leanne. Uh, be sure and attend. It's going to be a lot of good food, good fellowship. And then also Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have the chair aerobics here in the fellowship hall. Are there any other announcements this morning? <coughs> if not, if you will please stand and join with me in our invocation. Printed in the bulletin and O oh Lord, our Lord, you are the creator and sustainer of us all. Today we want to worship you with gladness and come into your presence with singing. We invoke your presence among us today so that no one who leaves this place will leave without a deep assurance of your love, without the strong confidence of your faithfulness, without a fresh and full commitment to live by your power and for your glory. Amen. Now, if you will, let's turn in your hymnal to page 374 and we'll join together in the hymn Standing on the Promises. <laughs> Thank you. 
time for us to share our joys and concerns with each other but before we lift them up to the Lord, in case y'all haven't noticed, I'm not in my best voice this morning. I don't know what my best voice is, but this isn't it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm battling a sinus infection. And I know it's a sinus infection because I've had so many of them through the years that I know the process, and that's the outstart. So believe me, if I thought I had something other than sinus infection, I would be taking the proper precautions. So um, what joys, what concerns do we have this morning? And you got a joy too when your co workers getting married this afternoon. Yes. That might be a joy and a concern. We'll just have to. Yeah, look up prayers that those two, they do walk with Christ and they may continue to do so many years, just like the young y'all have. Yeah. And another joy, your mother's doing better. So the trip to the doctor and the prayers have worked. So somebody else, I saw a hand up back there. Yes, Bill Davidson with pancreatic cancer. Wow. Good. Absolutely. And there were some folks in the back here. It's a great joy to see Andy back there this morning. Hi, Andy. We are so happy to have him back with us. After a, a good spell, we've missed him so much. Pat Rigsby had a member of her family pass away this week with COVID, so we want to keep uh, the Rigsby family in our prayers. Most all of you who are old residents of the forest area know Louise Russell, 104 years old, passed away last night. She was actually Sam Walker's wife, Nancy, was her mother-in-law. Uh, her first husband's mother, Buddy Russell's mother. But anyway, she's, we say mama will be really jealous. Mama didn't want anybody to get older than she was. Oh, so oh. she uh, was 104 just a couple of weeks ago. So keep thank that you, big family yes. in your prayers. Yes, thank you. My So we'll keep Sherry in our prayers. Mary Ann Widener's sister, Coretta, who was 95, passed away this week. So we want to remember her family and the Widener family. Widener family? Yes. And that's your brother Bill? Yes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any others? Yes. Um, Randy's brother, Gary Ryder, he's a doctor with lung cancer. Oh. He's just started chemo. And their mother, Barbara, um, fell recently and broke both wrists, and she just had surgery. My goodness. We'll pray on that. Yes. And let's not forget, you know, school just started up. And um, let's be in prayer for all of them, uh, both the students and faculty, bus drivers, everybody that's involved in helping to educate our children. We want to keep them in our prayers. Any others? Then let us bow our heads and lift up our hearts as we go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> 
Good and gracious Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the rain you sent our way this week. How refreshing it was to see the flowers come back and see the grass grow again so we can spend more time mowing it. We thank you, Father, that you always send us what we need when we need it. And help us to be mindful that all good gifts come from you. And Lord, we have many prayer concerns in our hearts this morning. There are, there are loved ones that are suffering many afflictions, but you're fully aware of all of them. Indeed, the Bible says a sparrow can't fall from to the ground without you taking notes. So certainly, someone can't fall ill with cancer or heart disease or Certainly don't pass from this world into your arms without you being aware. Father, we, we offer up prayers to them volunteering to do our part. Help us to be mindful that sometimes we can be the answer to the prayers. And so let us always be willing to serve, Father, even when it's inconvenient, even when it's uncomfortable. We know your Holy Spirit will enable us to bring many blessings upon many people if we will but surrender our will to yours. Father, we pray for the young couple about to be joined in holy matrimony this afternoon. What a blessing it is that they will be doing that. And we pray that you bless their new life together. And just as Jesus prayed that uh, you not take us out of the world, but that you protect us from the evil of the world, Father, we Pray your divine protection upon this young couple, that they will experience a lifetime of happiness and joy, and that as they grow closer to each other, they will also grow closer to you. Father, there's many things that confuse and confound us. There's many dangers and evils in this world, and sometimes we don't know which way to turn, but we do know this, that you and your holy word will see us through each and every situation that we face. And so we don't go trusting in the wisdom or the strength of human men and institutions, but our hope and trust is in you and in you alone. It's in your holy name we humbly pray. Let all God's children say, amen. <clears throat> Good to see you all this morning. <clears throat> Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So I'm going to tell you all the truth about something this morning. This children's story isn't just for you all. It's as much for these grown-ups here as it is for you all. Did you all know that? Well, you know it now. So I got something at show and tell time. Do you know what these are? What are they? Helmets. What kind of helmets? Bike helmet and a bike helmet. They're motorcycle helmets. Did you know that? This helmet here meets the minimum requirement of what the law requires if you're riding a motorcycle. You can see it's considerably different from this one, isn't it? This one here, and y'all want to put it on? Hmm? Go ahead. Now, you see? You got your ears open, you can hear a whole lot better. You got much more visibility, but it's just the top of your head that's protected, isn't it? You want to put this one on? That's 
That would take a little bit more to get on, doesn't it? And you don't have quite the visibility. Now, you got the straps up there, but that would block your view. But there you go. Get that one down. There you go. Because you can't see quite as good as you could with this, could you? But let me ask you something. If you were to end up face down on the pavement, which one do you think might cause you to pick your teeth out of it more than this? This is going to be more protection, isn't it? So you can take it off if you want. It gets a little hot. You know, you do have a little thing that flips up there. These are Leanne's, by the way. She said hers are snazzier than mine. Her, her biker name is Lightning. Mine's Thunder. <laughs> but now, you see, when you're wearing a motorcycle helmet, are you really, is your main purpose to um, keep from getting tickets because you got to have a helmet on to, to ride, or is the main purpose to protect you in case you're in an accident? What do you think? Well, I can tell you for yours truly here, main purpose is to protect me if I'm in an accident. Because I don't want to be picking my teeth up off the pavement. And this is much more protection. This past week, I saw um, two fathers from Maryland riding through the area, and they had their teenage children with them. One was on the back of his bike, and the other was in the sidecar. One of the fathers, one of the sidecar, had a helmet like this. The other one had one similar to this, but it was just what we call a three-quarter helmet. Completely open in the front. He's got some protection down on the here. But guess what? Guess what kind of mask their children were wearing? One like this. You know what that told me? They were more concerned about protecting their children than they were themselves. But what if something happened to their daddy? Where would the children be then? It's not always about comfort or what we like, but it's about the best protection that we can get, is it not? Now, I'm going to tell you one other thing I noticed, that while they were sitting at the traffic light up here in Forest, the girl on the back of the bike, she had her smartphone out and had them thumbs just to go on, you know, full blast, texting somebody. Now, I hope that was only at the stoplight, because what do you reckon would happen if they're going down the road and she's texting and her daddy has to swerve to avoid something? You're exactly right. She's going to fall off and find out how much protection that helmet is, right? Yeah. Let me show you. See this fellow up there on the screen? Y'all know who that is? You may not, because he died 20 years ago this year. That's Dale Earnhardt, the intimidator, they called him. And he died in the Daytona 500 20 years ago today. It was a really simple accident. Cars didn't get banged up that much. But he had a serious injury. And they tried to get him to wear this type of helmet device called a Hans device that would have protected him. But you know what he said? It's uncomfortable. He called it the noose because he said, this ain't more likely to hang me than it is to protect me. But if Dale Earnhardt had been wearing that Hans device, he'd probably still be alive today. So we cannot just look at what's most comfortable. We've got to look at what is going to protect us the most. Now, I'm going to give you one more example of how important it is that all of us are safety conscious. Several years ago, I was teaching my youngest daughter to drive. And while we were sitting in the parking lot at our house, and I was going through all the safety precautions and how important it was that she, you know, pay attention and, and be serious when you're behind the wheel. At that very moment, one of her friends was killed in an accident at Forest Middle School. They had driven from JF the short distance over to the middle school, and she hadn't bothered to buckle her, her seatbelt. And they had an accident at the middle school and she was killed in that accident. So even something as simple as buckling your seatbelt is important. Always be safety conscious. Today we're going to hear about putting on the whole armor of God. God provides means to protect us. 
but it's up to us to put it on and to use it properly. Does that make sense to you all? Good. Let us pray. Will you all repeat after me? Dear God, God, thank you you. for your divine protection. protection. And help us, Father, Father, to always be aware aware of just how precious life is. is. And And Lord, help us to be safety conscious. Help us, Father, to model that for others. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I'm not going to ask for a hug day because I'm battling this sinus infection. I don't think they're contagious, but I just want to be on the safe side, okay? All righty. Do you like those helmets? Yeah.
Our scripture reading today comes from Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. Wish for, wish all of those, with all of those, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me that I may speak a message that may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. For I am an, am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. Thank you, C.W. Y'all have to pardon this voice this morning. Our um, <clears throat> gospel text this morning is a familiar passage. It comes from the gospel of John chapter 8, <clears throat> verses 31 to 36, and I would invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of God's holy word. Listen carefully. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in their household. The son has a place there forever. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know you are descendants of Abraham, yet you look for an opportunity to kill me because there is no place in you for my word. I declare what I have seen in the Father's presence. As for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. And again, I apologize for battling this sinus infection. <clears throat> I'm just thankful that's all it is. <clears throat> well. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. Me and Jesus got it all worked out. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. We don't need nobody to tell us what it's all about. Now, my apologies to Tom T. Hall for doing such a terrible rendition of his song. And I guess y'all know he passed away this past Friday. 85 years old. One of my 
favorite songwriters, the, the, the storyteller, they called him. And the inspiration for this song was a saying that his mother had. Fancy slide, there you go. The saying that his mother had, whenever time trouble come up, she said, don't worry about it. Me and Jesus got it covered. Me and Jesus be all right. Now, it's a great song. And I'm not disparaging Tom T. or his saying the mother at all. But folks, I think y'all will agree that there are some errors there, is it not? I mean, grammatically, we should not say me and Jesus, but what? Jesus and I. But what do you want, good grammar or good lyrics? But also, folks, theologically, we should never put ourselves before Jesus, should we? But it should always be Jesus and I. But also, there is a sentiment that's wrapped up in saying, Jesus and me, we don't need anybody else to tell us what's going on. We got it covered ourselves. Folks, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, in fact, that we are all part of the body of Christ. We all need each other. It's not just me and Jesus. But it's me and Jesus and all of us. We have gotten so accustomed to focusing so intently on our personal relationship with Jesus that we fail to understand that we have a corporate relationship with Jesus. We are the body of Christ, not just by ourselves, but all of us together. And this has led to a big misunderstanding when people look at putting on the full armor of God. Paul is wrapping up the letter that he wrote to the churches in Ephesus. And so this is where he's getting the main point here now. And he's telling us to put on the full armor of God. And he's using an illustration that everyone in that day would have recognized, and that is that of a Roman soldier. Everybody saw Roman soldiers, and they were very familiar with the armor that those soldiers wore. But guess what, folks? They didn't wear them alone. No. All of the soldiers wore the same armor together, and all of them together is what made them such an effective fighting force. Paul has just been telling the people how they need to be united in the spirit so that together with the different gifts they've been given, they could build up the body of Christ. So this concept of me and Jesus, and when we put on the armor of God, we're putting it on just for our own selves to protect ourselves. Oh, and there's only the one offensive weapon, which is the sword, right? Y'all have heard this preach before, have you not? And it's interesting, all of the commentaries that I read on it talk about, you know, the only offensive piece of equipment there is the sword and everything else is defense. Folks, I'm here to tell you as a former soldier, the whole armor of God is for offense and defense. In fact, there's an old saying, the best defense is what? A good offense. We are to put on the whole armor of God, not just protect us while we're in the sanctuary, but when we go out into the world. It's the same armor that protects those soldiers, whether they're on offense or defense. And so when we put on the whole armor of God, it is for both offense and defense. It is protect us as we do our mission. Remember when Jesus gave the Great Commission what did he say? Did he say, stay and make disciples? He said what? Go. That's why you need shoes on your feet so you can go. You can run barefoot if you're going to be home. How many of y'all maybe been firemen? A any former firemen here? Well, let me ask you something. What does a fireman wear when they go to put out a fire? What's it called? Turnout gear. They're, they're, it's called their turnout gear. And guess what? As conscious as they are about every second to be ready to go fight, fight a fire, 
They don't wear their turnout gear gear when they're in the fire station. You don't need it when you're making chili or whatever. No, they put their turnout gear on when they go out to fight a fire. When they go on the offensive is when they put on the protection. And it's the same for us. As soldiers in the army of Christ, we put on the whole armor of God so that we are protected in our mission to go and make disciples because we're going to encounter all kinds of evil in this world. And so it's not just while we're here in the safety of the sanctuary that we need the armor of God, but when we go out into the world. So let's take a look at, at the armament. The first thing Jesus said was to wrap around your waist the belt of truth. The utility belt we wore in the army is what held our 45 as an officer. It's what held our canteen with water. It's what held uh, emergency packets, the first aid kits, and a whole lot of stuff was on that utility belt. But we got a different kind of belt in the armor of God, and that is the belt of truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Make you free. If it's the truth that makes us free, then what enslaves us? Lies. The opposite of truth is lie, right? If it's the truth that makes us free, it's lies and enslaves us. Next slide, R.D. R.D., next slide, please. Thank you. I want to share with you all this morning... My three laws of truth, okay? Next slide, R.D. Shower's first law of truth states that sincerity is not the same as veracity. People may be completely sincere in what they believe and say, but they can be sincerely wrong. And you all have experienced that, have you not? So sincerity is not the same as veracity. And you've got to look beyond what people are telling you to make sure that it's really true. And people that are sincerely spreading misinformation, they're not intending to do harm. But guess what? If we believe misinformation, harm will be done, will it not? So first law of truth, sincerity is not the same as veracity. Next slide, R.D. Shower's second law of truth states, some people would rather believe the lie they want to embrace rather than the truth they refuse to face. <clears throat> Think about that. Some people would rather believe the lie they want to embrace rather than the truth they refuse to face. That was the situation with the Jews that believed in Jesus. We know their history, do we not? Were they slaves in Egypt for 400 years? Had they not been taken off in captivity to Babylon for them to say to Jesus, we are descendants of Abraham. We've never been slaves of anyone. They would rather believe the lie that they wanted to embrace rather than the truth they refused to face. And folks, you become enslaved by the lie. We have that happening in our world today, let me tell you. There are lots of people in our world today who are much more comfortable believing the lies that they want to embrace rather than the truth they refuse to face. Next slide, Artie. One too many. Back up. <laughs> the, the third... Don't worry about it. The third law of truth says this. Truth, oh, he's backing up anyway. Keep going. Wrong way. <laughs> truth is impartial and unbiased. It is our interpretation and application of truth that is partisan. Think about that. Truth. Here we go, it is impartial and unbiased. It is our interpretation and application of the truth that is partisan. 
One of my favorite Democrats was um, Daniel Portrick, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who was the senior Democrat from New York at his time. And he said, everybody is entitled to their own opinion, but not their own facts. And so we need to know the difference between facts and opinion. Next slide, R.D. Here we go. Now, folks, it is a fact, an indisputable fact, that the CDC has designated Bedford County a high transmission vicinity. That's a fact. There's no disputing that. But that designation is based upon an opinion. Did y'all know that? It's based upon an opinion. It's based upon a statistic that they look about how many cases per 100,000. Now, folks, I don't know if y'all are aware of enough, that's not 100,000 people living in Bedford County. Right? Y'all know what Mark Twain said about lies? There's three kind of lies. There's lies, damn lies, and what? Statistics. What we need to look at are the actual numbers, not some statistic that somebody has cooked up and has come up with their own standard. We need to look at the actual numbers ourselves. And as you can see, in the last seven days, there were a total of 135 cases of COVID-19 here in Bedford County, 135. That works out to less than two people out of a thousand. Do you realize that? They're going to tell you that there's going to be, oh, 300 and some people per 100,000. But as I said, there ain't 100,000 people in Bedford County, barely 79,000. So the number of cases we have, 135, actually works out to less than two per thousand. If we can get 1,000 people in this sanctuary, which ain't going to happen, is it? <laughs> two of them would be likely to have the COVID. Now, here's something that is very significant. 30% of those cases are from our schools. Did y'all know that? 30% of these 135 COVID cases, I think about 41 of them, are coming from the schools. The school system doesn't say if they're faculty or students. They just report the numbers coming from the schools. We need to take note of that. We really do. Now, of those 135, only 10 have ended up in the hospital. And there have been no deaths. Praise God for that. There have been about two deaths this summer in Bedford County from the COVID. Last one was on August the 11th. I check this stuff every day because I take it seriously. I take you all's safety very seriously. And one of my primary responsibilities is to make sure we have a safe environment for our gatherings, whether it's here in worship or at the fellowship lunch this afternoon. So I take it very seriously. And we've got our, our vision teams, we're meeting and talking about these to see if and when we need to, to modify things. You know, I got this sinus infection. If I thought I had, you know, simplest particle, I'd be wearing a mask right now to protect you all. So we got to take it seriously. 98% of the cases in death are from people who are not fully vaccinated. 98%. Now, we're all adults here. So just like we looked at those helmets, we all need to make the decision for ourselves. What makes the most sense for keeping us safe? I'm not going to twist anybody's arm to get vaccinated. I'm not going to twist anybody's arm to, to wear, you know, a mask. Just like if I'm out riding with somebody, we don't ride anymore, but I would not put them down because they got a helmet that's going to be less safe than the one I'm wearing. We're all adults. We can make those decisions for ourselves. But when we put on the whole armor of God, we need to understand just exactly what that does. Next slide, if you would, R.D., the, the whole armor of God is to enable us to carry out our mission. It is to protect us, not to ensure our safety. 
You see, that's something people forget, is that the whole armor of God is not going to ensure your safety. It will provide protection so that you can carry out your mission. That's why one of the items we put on is the helmet of salvation. Where does salvation come from? Not the armor of God, but from Jesus himself, because Jesus died on the cross and rose again, and he defeated even death. So we don't have to fear anything this world throws at us because our salvation is not in our armor, but it's in Jesus Christ. Do you all think that the Apostle Paul took his own advice and put on the full armor of God? Of course he did. But what happened to Paul? The tradition is he was beheaded by Nero in Rome. The full armor of God doesn't protect us from the evil in the world. It enables us to go out in spite of that evil and to succeed in our mission. But we don't do it individually. We do it collectively. The army used to have a motto in one of their advertisers saying, an army of one. Not there's only one soldier, but we fight as one. And as the church, we are in ministry to the world as one. Not just me and Jesus, but all of us together we will be successful in overcoming the evil force of the world because Jesus has already done it. And folks, I'm here to tell you, this COVID-19, these other things, that, that's the evil force is doing that. Last year, Jane Fonda, y'all remember Hanoi Jane, right? She said, thank God for the coronavirus. That wasn't God's doing God's not the one who's killed millions of people. God is not the one who shuttered his churches for a year. This is the forces of evil that has wreaked this havoc on the world. But guess what? Jesus has already defeated those forces of evil. But we still have to face them this day and every day to the glory of God and our neighbor's good. We will collect our tithes and offerings now. Did I do that? 
Sorry about that. Let us pray our prayer of thanksgiving together. God of power and might, through the ages you have reminded us through prophets and apostles that we are called to battle, not with one another, but against the powers of darkness and evil. It is this battle that sends children to bed with empty bellies, while others have so much food it damages them. It is this battle that imprisons those whose only crime is poverty, while those with more than they could ever spend lose sleep scheming how to get more. As we make our gifts to you this day, may we remember which side we're on. In the precious living name, loving name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now let us pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 536, Precious Name. and faithfully proclaiming the name of Jesus, spreading the good news to a world full of darkness and bad news. Go with God's love, his peace, 
his joy, and his blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.